One of the things I talk about in my book, Mycorrhizal Planet, is the non-disturbance principle. This whole idea that the less we can disturb the ground to achieve our agricultural goals, the more we're going to have fungal good things happening in that ground. And, and I start with the idea that we need to begin with gratefulness. Um, go on from there to not screwing things up. Remember our job as captain of the team, excessive tillage, use of chemicals. It all breaks some of these connections, which are so, so important for plant health. Go on from there to deliberately doing fungal things. And I've alluded to some of this already, and we're going to get into a few more examples. And, and it ends with the fact that we're honoring the earth. We're honoring the way nature does health. And that in turn means that we become better and better growers. It doesn't mean we instantly have all the answers, we figure things out. It's a, it's a series of steps, but in our hearts, that desire to do fungal things, based on what we've been talking about so far this morning, is so critical. As farmers, we want to kind of find where we should be and think about how can we adjust our systems so we're really giving the fungal aspect the prominence it deserves. Here in our home gardens, one of the ways I prep soil is with a broad fork. You know, you might be utilizing a chisel pal, but instead of totally tearing up the soil and churning it over and over, breaking up that mycelium, there are ways to go about keeping the fungal connection more intact. Similarly, I use a flail mower to take down a cover crop. Use surface decomposition. I may plant the next cover crop into that stubble, and that in turn allows me to go from something like rye and vetch to oats and a few other selections that are going to winter kill so that the following spring I have really nice ground to plant into. There's many different ways. This is all coming under the banner of what I call fungal things. Another thing I tie into my garden is this, this idea of fungal springboards. So here I'm talking about perennial plantings, be it strawberries or asparagus or a bed of raspberries or even an apple tree nursery that in the context of our family garden are there somewhat permanently. The fungi have a home where even where I do something a little more disturbance based in a shallow manner, um, next to them, the fungi are gonna reach out and be in place to colonize it. You know, one of the beautiful things about those biodiversity strips on contour being recommended for row crop farmers is it's, it's not just about this array of diverse flowering plants that attract all these beneficial insects. Those are fungal springboards as well. They're in place to reach back out to the next year's crop. Grazing comes into this as well. Animals do a lot when grazed properly under holistic principles, as Alan Savory teaches, to help grass roots go deeper, get more carbon in the soil, and get the fungi all that much deeper as well. This is how the prairie system, the prairie soils were built. So all these things we can implement in the different types of farms that we grow. Agroforestry has a place. Here we're talking about those fungal springboards. We're talking about the idea of, of getting some bridge trees in there that work with ectomycorrhizae, but bring the mineral nutrition up to the endo species that we're growing for forage or row cropping in between the tree rows. All these different systems, all these different ideas. When we start looking at things through that fungal lens, when we say to ourselves, I want to honor this fungal networking. This is where the magic happens. You start to see where your choices should go, what direction you should be heading. And that's the fun part of farming, the fun part of growing, figuring things out so we can work with how nature does help.